Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, dwyervip.com, free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, I'm a live and let live type, right? I, you know, don't spend too much of my day trying to follow anyone's orders and I'm not trying to order people around. I really do believe that people, adults at least, I don't want my kids to get the wrong idea here. You know, I do believe adults should do whatever they want, right? You know, uh, as long as they're dealing with their careers, their lives, other adults. So if Floyd Mayweather, one of boxing's best ever, wants to do kickboxing, good for him. But let's be clear here. The decision is going to hurt boxing. Floyd is an unbeaten boxer. Now, if he were to choose in his 40s, where he is now, if he were to choose to do auto racing, and if he lost an auto race, no one would care. The sport is different from boxing, right? It's not close. People wouldn't think of it as, oh, Floyd's first loss. They would view Floyd as doing something else. But kickboxing is too close to boxing, isn't it? For the same reason the same reason that many thought Conor McGregor had a chance against Floyd Mayweather. For the same reason why that fight was a box office bonanza. Right? People thought the sports were close enough where they were thinking it was the same sport. Well, that's the problem boxing's going to have if Floyd looks bad against a kickboxer. If Floyd loses, many people are going to consider it to be Floyd's first loss. Worse than that, many people are going to consider kickboxers to be tougher than boxers. I'm not saying it makes sense. I'm just talking about what the reality is, right? Let me say too, that kickboxing is a different sport than boxing. Just like MMA is a different sport than boxing, right? Conor McGregor had no chance against Floyd in a boxing match. I said so here before the fight. Likewise, I feel Floyd would have no chance against Conor McGregor in an MMA contest. Now here Floyd in his 40s is taking up kickboxing. Folks, I used to have a video on my site here on YouTube of future Hall of Famer, former heavyweight champion, Vitaly Klitschko, getting knocked out cold. Folks, I mean cold in a kickboxing match. Few people know he used to be a kickboxer before he became a boxer, right? He joined boxing after he got his butt kicked in kickboxing. Google it. Now, no one cared at the time because, of course, he was a kickboxer at the time. He wasn't a former heavyweight champion. If the order had been reversed, if he was a heavyweight champion for several years, who then ventured into kickboxing and who then got KO'd, right? By a kick, roundhouse, but KO'd. We'd be talking about it ad nauseum. The guy who beat him would be able to say, gee, I think I could beat Anthony Joshua. Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, right? The loss would actually 
opened the door to a bunch of arguments that longtime fans of boxing don't want to have. Right? We see Habib. We know he's the man in MMA. But we privately feel that if he steps in the ring, the boxing ring, against a championship level boxer, right? I know I would expect Habib to lose badly. Right? So if a boxer ventures into MMA or kickboxing and loses, and it's happened before, as Ray Mercer, James Tony, many others know. Right? Many people are going to start saying, hey, whoa, wait a moment. You know, are boxers that tough? Is kickboxing an analogous sport? Are kickboxers just tougher? They're going to say, hey, you know, Floyd's good until legs are used. Then Floyd's average. Why am I discounting the use of legs in combat? Right, so watch this Floyd Mayweather story closely. Quite frankly, Floyd doesn't owe any of us anything. He's given us a great career in boxing. Right, he's his own man. He can do what he wants. But he's in his 40s now. There's a chance that he's going to get beat in every, every kickboxing match or MMA match that he ventures into. He's not going to be world class in either because the learning curve is too steep. Right? There are young men out there right now who are teenagers and people in their 20s who are devoting most of their lives to their crafts. A guy in his 40s is not going to be able to, as a second career, join those sports and suddenly start beating everyone. That's just not going to happen. This is kind of like Michael Jordan deciding he was going to be a baseball player. Right? Late in his 20s. It's just not going to happen. So, Floyd can do whatever he wants. I agree with that. I congratulate him on being a renaissance man. I congratulate him on being willing to risk his reputation because we all know if Floyd gets knocked out like Vitaly Klitschko did in a kickboxing match, that loop is going to be playing. That loop's going to be all over Twitter every time anyone has any conversation about Floyd being an all-time great. Right? You know it's going to happen. So I applaud Floyd's bravery. But I also realize that it's going to hurt the sport of boxing. Let's talk about a fight that I think you need to know about and you need to consider. But first, let's talk about betting philosophy here because it's very important, especially as I look at the community page here on my YouTube account and I see the results of some polls. Polls are unscientific understood understood right but wow the results are surprising so let's talk about reality here for a moment before I give a pick here on Lomachenko's next fight against Jose Pedraza now let me just say we live in a world of probabilities right underdogs actually have a chance of winning folks Right? We live in a world where Trump beat Clinton. Where Buster Douglas beat Mike Tyson. Understand, Douglas was going off at greater than 30 to 1 odds. In other words, if you bet against Mike Tyson, for every fight up to the Buster Douglas fight, let's say the not every fight, but let's say the 25 preceding fights. If you bet against Mike Tyson for 25 fights in a row and lost every time, right? If you bet on Buster Douglas and you won just this one fight, you made a profit on the whole endeavor. 
think about it. Right? Assuming you bet the same unit. Well, let me say this too. We live in a world where Chris Bird, people forget this, beat Vitaly Klitschko. So, the point I'm making here, and I believe it's something that gamblers know intuitively, that casual fans don't know, don't understand, don't live by, right? Just understand, at the championship level, there are very few great fighters, right? Very few. In fact, at the championship level, versus other elite fighters, or fighters with what I call fastballs, some unique trait that's outsized, right? A great punch, great hand speed. Even in fights where the favorites are supposed to win, I would say that the favorites only win at the championship level, about 80% of the time. Right? Favorites don't win all the time, especially when they're up against world-class opponents. In fact, I would argue that favorites lose 20% of the time. Right? 20%. I would say at least 20%. Now, sometimes it's a fluke injury. We just saw Ryan Burnett throw out his back and lose to Nanino Denier. Now, looking at the community page here, I see that most people believe that had that fight continued without the back injury, Ryan Burnett was on his way to beating Nanino Denier. But if you bet on Denier, you don't care, right? You actually collect it. Let the other people worry about the details. You cashed your ticket at great odds, right? Sometimes a favorite gets caught by a big punch. Let's remember that longtime light heavyweight champion Adonis Stevenson, a guy who KO'd current heavyweight Tony Bellew, right, KO'd him made him look bad. Understand that Adonis Stevenson himself got KO'd by Darnell Boone, a guy who famously dropped Andre Ward in an earlier fight. Right? Think about it. Sometimes favorites lose because the judges are three blind mice. Now here, there are just too many boxing matches. As subscribers know, I feel some of them happened in the last 12 months, right? Uh, especially regarding a great middleweight champion. Well, there are too many matches in boxing history where three blind mice have led to a favorite losing the match. So, when I see a very tough opponent, Right? World class. Underrated. Understand, in these fights, you know, some of these guys have risen up through the ranks. Some have held titles in the past. Some are holding titles now. But we overlook the title because they're not the super champion in the weight class. Right? When I see a very tough world class opponent with a style that's going to give the favorite problems then I'm interested, right? I'm very interested, especially when I'm getting huge odds that give the opponent a less than 20% chance of winning, right? So, let me say this too. In addition to looking at the opponent, and again, it's philosophical, Let's also look at the favorites. You know, superhero movies are the rage right now. We all 
want to believe in Superman. Right? In invincibility. Even when the evidence tells us otherwise. Right? Simply put, none of these guys are invincible. None of them. So, unbeaten with a greater than 90% KO ratio, heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder was literally holding on versus Luis Ortiz. Right? I'm talking about fights in the last five years, folks. He wasn't even cut. But yet they called the doctor into the ring to look at him during the fight. Think that's unusual? What about unbeaten heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua on the canvas to Vladimir Klitschko who was in his late 30s and who had not fought in more than a year? Right? Now, for purposes of this video, let's talk about Vasyl Lomachenko, who was down on the canvas his last fight. Again, all of this is within the last five years, folks. Hell, I could say the last three years. Lomachenko was down on the canvas against Jorge Linares. This was before he... <laughs> had surgery on an injury, right? Let's just say, I think Jose Pedraza, who's going off at a plus 650, plus 650, has a better than one in 7.5 chance, right? It's 650 to one as you do the math. So when you see a plus 650, they're telling you that the other guy would win six and a half times before Pedraza wins once. I'm not buying it. I believe Pedraza has a better than one in 7.5 chance of winning this fight. Right now, the community page on my YouTube account has voted on this and only 4% of you, 4% believe that Pedraza will win this fight, 4%. Folks, I call that a bubble. People who pick stocks understand what I'm saying. The time to buy is when there's blood in the streets. The time to buy is when what you're picking is so unpopular that you don't have to fight with anyone to get it. It's just sitting there on the side of the room. Right? Jim Rogers, perhaps the greatest investor of all time, has said that his investment strategy is to simply to look at the corner of the room, see money over there, walk over there and pick it up. The time you're going to get values is when only 4% of the public thinks that a world-class opponent, a champ who has only lost once against a big hitter in Gervonta Davis, a guy who has a punch Lomachenko doesn't have. It's when the public somehow feels that Pedraza, a dangerous man in any fight, has close to no chance of winning the fight, right? So, let's just look at the fighters for a moment here. Pedraza does have a problem with a big puncher who can walk him down, right? Gervonta Davis had no respect for Pedraza's punching power. He walked him down. He threw big shots. People need to understand that Gervonta Davis is one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in the entire sport of boxing. Right? For his size, he hits like a Golovkin. You don't have that in this fight. 
right? Let me point out that where Pedraza doesn't have a problem is with high effort, volume guys. As Ray Beltran found out when Pedraza beat Beltran in his backyard. Now Lomachenko, let's be clear here. He's a superstar. High volume. He's ambidextrous. Great legs, moves well, great athlete. Now, it might shock some people, right? Because public mood shifts quite a bit. But Jose Pedraza is also ambidextrous. Jose Pedraza is also a great mover when he wants to be. Jose Pedraza is also a great athlete. Now the difference between the two guys, at least from this seat, is that Lomachenko is higher volume, throws a lot more punches. But you need to understand that in boxing there's a trade-off. When you get to be too high volume, you're open defensively. When you throw too many punches, guys can time an entry point. If your hands are out punching another guy, you're open for something coming back. Right? I throw the right hand. A guy can tuck a punch over my outstretched hand. It takes a lot of skill. Folks, that's exactly the kind of skill that Jose Pedraza has. Let's talk about the hedge in this fight. Let's just say Pedraza's not fighting Gervonta Davis. He's not fighting a guy with one-punch knockout power. A guy who could turn out the lights with a flick of the switch. He's fighting a volume guy. Right? Lomachenko, God bless him, doesn't have a lot of power. Now, casual fans see that he got the KO in his last fight against Jorge Linares. In fact, they're going to see other KOs in his record against great opponents. Right? But many of the KOs, many of them, are because he was facing sluggers who couldn't handle his athletic superiority. Right here, and I can't say this enough, he's fighting another great athlete. A guy who, dare I say, is a much more accurate puncher than him. Understand, Pedraza's game is the well-placed counter. You charge in on him, he's the guy who, like Tom Brady, maintains his eye level. Right? He's not going to look away. He's not, he's not going to be overwhelmed. The action's not going to be too fast for him. He's not a slugger trying to load up on one shot. No, that's not his game. He's not Nicholas Walters. His game is different. His game is the game of a great athlete who's looking for countering opportunities. Where the bullets are flying and the guy's looking at you and he's seeing the openings. I don't think Lomachenko has the power to knock out Jose Pedraza, a guy who was stopped by Gervonta Davis. Right? I feel the place where you make your profits is in the gap between what's popular and what really is. Right? What's reality? The reality here is that as good as Lomachenko is, and folks, he's great, he's not unbeatable. He's fighting a world-class opponent. The opponent, in my opinion, can match him in athleticism. The opponent, in my opinion, is the better counter-puncher. 
right? Pedraza is the kind of guy who, if Lomachenko comes in on him, Pedraza could stand his ground. He's not going to be moving backwards, overwhelmed. He's not going to look like Jason Sosa at times in that fight. Right? He's going to stand his ground. He's going to have Loma come into him. He's going to know that Loma always walks in a bit too aggressively. That's what got him knocked down by Jorge Linares. Right? Pedraza, younger guy than Linares, less shop worn than Linares, right? More of a stylist. Linares is a great fighter, too. I don't mean to diss Jorge, right? I thought that fight was up for grabs until, let's say, the round before the knockdown, right? I thought that Linares fight was up for grabs. I believe the public has forgotten how close that fight was. Right? I think you see a guy who looks dominant. You then hear that the guy won the fight. You see the highlights. Lenara is on the canvas, the ref counting. And you say to yourself, oh, Lomachenko's the man. Oh, he was on the canvas before? Well, whatever. You know, uh, Ali was on the canvas before. <laughs> Great fighter. Must have just slipped up momentarily. Folks, he's going to be slipping up momentarily several times against Pedraza. The bet I like, right? And I'm not saying Lomachenko's not a bad man. It's an odds play for me. I'm just saying that this fight is much closer to 50-50 than the plus 650 odds are suggesting. And I believe it's hedgeable because I think Pedraza... When he's not fighting a Gervonta Davis, is blessed defensively, right? He disarmed Ray Beltran, folks. Guy who's aggressive, two-handed, is always coming effort-wise. I believe Pedraza's blessed defensively. I believe Pedraza's a blessed athlete, right? I think he's going to do much better than advertised. The bet I'm suggesting here is Pedraza to win. Why? Because you're getting the huge odds there. It's Pedraza to win, hedged with the over, right? If the fight goes a distance, okay, I'm good, the hedge held. Understand, when you're getting a plus 650 on one side of the play, you don't have to put the same amount of money on both sides. With a plus 650, I can then say, okay, I'm covered here. Let me take some of my expected winnings and put it over on the hedge. Let me buy insurance here. Let me put it over on the over so that if either happens, even if I'm getting less than even money on the over, if either happens, I'm good, right? Because I'm hedged. But I need for you to understand the risk involved, and it's substantial. If Lomachenko comes out and closes this early, if Pedraza gets discouraged, and his corner then says, hey, that's it, before the over mark hits, you lose it all. That's how I'm playing it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me point out too that when you see in a big time fight like this, only 4% of the public thinking that a world championship guy who used to hold the title who looks good, who isn't injured, who looked great in his last fight. Look at the last round of that Beltran fight when Pedraza decides to come inside on Ray Beltran. When only 4% of you think that a guy that talented has a chance to win the fight, that's a betting opportunity. Right, Box saying, quite frankly, 
is much more competitive than that, right? You just saw Ryan Burnett unbeaten lose, right? The two, well, two of the three unbeaten heavyweight champions have looked shaky in recent fights. Right? Manuel Char, who owns a share of the title at heavyweight. Right? He's been knocked out cold in the past. Right? Even great fighters. Adonis Stevenson, knocked out cold by Darnell Boone. Right? Revisit. Floyd Mayweather against Zab Judah. You're going to notice Mayweather's gloves touch the canvas. That should have been counted as a knockdown. Revisit Mayweather. I'm just naming great fighters. Revisit Mayweather against Castillo. Folks, the scores on HBO had Castillo winning that fight. Right? I'm just saying boxing history is filled. I mean, literally filled. With dominant fighters, Lennox Lewis against Oliver McCall, dominant fighters in their prime, having car crashes, right? The reason we're drawn to the sport is because of the competition. The sport's competitive. So if we know the sport is competitive, how then do fights get priced in an uncompetitive manner, right? I don't think there's a guy on the planet who I believe is going to beat Jose Pedraza six and a half times out of seven and a half times. I, I, just, I just don't think that guy exists. Pedraza is just too skilled, right? He's just too skilled. So when I see a line like this, yeah, I'm going to try to get a taste of the plus 650 odds. I'll hedge the play because the hedge allows me to participate. Right? The hedge allows me to watch the fight and then if they say and the winner is Lomachenko, and let's face it, Lomachenko's a fan favorite, he's a judge favorite. Right? But then I'm there ready to fight for another day. But you're kidding yourself if you feel in a real championship level fight that any fighter in this sport should get the kind of odds Lomachenko is getting for this fight. Pedraza is simply too dangerous. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I like Pedraza to win, hedged against the over. Thanks for stopping by.